Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. From a rainy Sunday morning in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a, a, a Vancouver like weather here in Hong Kong. Um, dark and rainy, and I just finished a little inversion practice. And here we go. Good morning. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Stephanie, Brandy, Kelly. Morning, morning. Nice to be together on a Sunday morning. Hi, Betty. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Jenny. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Mikey. Bob Z. Bob Z, calling in from, from Lama, Guy Valley. Good. Hi, Allie. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, Jen Kentrup. Good morning, Vivian. Hi, Joan. Hi. Morning. The Fabric Workshop. I couldn't answer the phone. I was getting ready. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. <clears throat> Good morning, Pei. Greetings. Greetings. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, Suzanne. Hello. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Mary. Hi, Myrna. Kier Kristen in Singapore. There you are. Good. Mavis. Good morning, Mavis. Good morning, Canny. Yes. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Marcel. Yeah. Hi, Su Ling. <clears throat> I'm not taming my hair, Jim. No more hair comments coming from you, Jimbo. <laughs> okay, so Cassie, Cassie, hello. Keep your eyes on the road, Cassie. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Kitty. Good morning, Vietnam. All right, good morning. Hi, Kitty. Hi, Joing. Okay, so um, Cassie, I think you're the 100th person. There you are. <clears throat> So um, this morning I wanted to talk about, uh, hi Carly, yes, roll call, you made it. Mm, you made it. Yeah, okay, so um, yesterday I discussed, yesterday I, I discussed um, the concept that, good morning Lisa, good morning. Yesterday I discussed the concept that what we do not know is more important than what we know in terms of the path for our life, looking ahead, that what we don't know yet has a more infinite value than the finite value of what we already know, of what we already know, what we already know about ourselves, what we already know about life, how things work, how best to operate in relationship and in life. And I was thinking uh, today, um, I did, I was meditating this morning with uh, Jen. Jen has a meditation challenge that we're meditating every morning together on, on the Instagram. And she was talking, she was fielding questions about um, why we meditate. People were asking like, what, 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 what's the value? What's the purpose? And, you know, it's, these are good questions. Like, I mean, that's, that's a big part of our, path is inquiry and 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 this leads by that concept that well we don't know there's so much more that we don't know and in that vastness of what we don't know lies so much potential wisdom and value for living our best life and 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 finding uh some peace and finding some joy you know and, or more peace and more joy, not like it's void, like, <clears throat> but in that meditation as an example of our rituals and our practices as yogis, meditation, um, in my experience is in one part, it is letting go of what we know. It's like the practice of letting go of what we know, like the mind is so preoccupied with the information that it holds. Like if you only know a little bit of stuff, it'll just sort of roll and roll and roll the things that you know. Hi Morgan, 
it'll, it'll just roll on things you know. So until you have new information, hi Vivian, more information or more wisdom, it isn't able to extrapolate new things from the finite information. So in meditation, there is this, there's this very um, humbling act of letting go, letting go of what you know, because the, the premise of meditation is to, is to let go of our thinking mind, right? To let go of the attachment to the thinking. <clears throat> and the, um, the, my alarm's gonna go off. Uh-oh, <clears throat> hang on. And we're back. <laughs> so <clears throat> the, the, the act of meditation is, is very practical. It is this capacity to let go of the attachment to knowing anything and, and being in that vastness of not knowing. Again, yesterday's concept of like what we don't know is more important because what we know is so finite. And if we're seeking to live into the fullness of our life, we want to live into the infinite possibilities that we haven't experienced yet and, and, and the wisdom that we don't know yet. I mean, if we were to say like, this is as good as it gets, the state of our life right now is how it will stay forever. That would be quite demotivating. That would be hard to get out of bed. It would be hard to get out of bed. <clears throat> you know, I mean, for me, I think maybe, maybe for you, you get out of bed anyway, because I'm the worst. <clears throat> so this idea that, that meditation is an act of, of letting go of what we know of, of, of in, for a moment, not knowing something, practicing, not knowing, like, I don't know. And you just, you just drop it. And <clears throat> I like this so much. It has helped me so much. Um, there in the, in the Greek, um, traditions like the, the Greek philosophies, which I'm so fascinated by, um, you know, you have the, uh, uh, sarcasm as a philosophy, cynicism as a philosophy, you know, and the one that I, I really, um, uh, uh, appreciate and read a lot on is, um, stoicism. Yesterday I recommended that book, the meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And, and this is a great stoic read on the stoic virtues. And, and so within this Greek, um, uh, thinking there are uh, virtues that become virtues become our 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 behavior. How do you train your behavior to live a good life? And so they extrapolate these virtues. One of the main Stoic virtues is temperance, and temperance is <clears throat> well. First, it's wildly absent in life in in society. Um, because temperance is like the capacity to restrain ourselves or to, to moderate ourselves, you know. And um, I am a slow learner, you know. It has taken me, I'm, I am barely catching on to things in the spiritual path. I mean, barely, like by a tooth floss hanging off a cliff, you know. <clears throat> but um, this idea of temperance has really... It has caught my attention over the past year and it has become an incredible tool to, for me to, to ward off <clears throat> a lot of the more common or historical um, uh, rough roads that I would travel, rough days, uh, difficulties, painful, mental, emotional, uh, all the storms. Temperance being... <clears throat> The ability to restrain ourselves, <clears throat> if you look at it in a, um, from an external point of reference, when we are suffering, when we are having a hard time, our, you know, our most common behavior or reaction is to look for something to do or to say or to have to move us out of this discomfort thinking like, I know how to cure this pain and suffering. I'm going to go get something, go have something. <clears throat> and, um, and temperance is like, how can we restrain ourselves? Can we moderate that reaction? Can we pause 
and, and not be so quick to think we know what we need. Pause and, and in, in this act of temperance, recognize that what we don't know is so much bigger and more powerful and more important than what we do know, especially in times of like serious difficulty, pain and suffering. So when we, when we learn to restrain ourselves in those moments, we have the capacity to have a much more horizontal view or peripheral view. The present moment is the peripheral view. The forward view is future and the back view is history, the past. This horizontal view is like, we have options. We have possibilities. And <clears throat> by practicing temperance, we have the chance of like pausing and like not lunging forward for more action or more, 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 more something to occupy us. And, 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 and to catch ourselves and to realize that often we actually don't need anything. You know, the roads of distraction, the roads of information, the roads of activity, sometimes we, we don't need them. And when we're, I mean, it is, it is bloody hard. It is bloody hard to not. You know, there's a great story. Um, Miles Davis, you know Miles Davis? <clears throat> oh, you do? How is he? Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, long dead. But Miles Davis is like the ultimate um, artist in the, you know, as a musician. He was like, you know, he's the guy that if you're a musician, you, you know, the musicians say like, yeah, he was the greatest or he was the best. He was the Ali of, of music, right? <clears throat> for, for, for music lovers, sometimes you don't know him or like him or whatever, so it, he doesn't really count. But when you look to the people that know the most about that, they're like, yeah. <clears throat> and <clears throat> one, of, um, one of the great stories is that Miles was teaching Herbie Hancock piano. Well, I mean, Herbie Hancock's greatest, one of the greatest pianists and, and, and musicians also. But when, when Her Herbie was playing for Miles, Miles, because Miles is the king, he would tell all these great guys who played for him, how to play. And his story to, 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 to um, Herbie Hancock was, it's not the keys, it's the space between that makes it music. You know, it's like, it sounds so cliche, right? But it's like, it's not the music, it's like the, the magic for, for, in Miles' view was, was when you didn't play. And if you watch old videos of Miles Davis, it's like, especially in those, the heat of his genius, those big shows and like, I mean, when he was massive in like the eighties and stuff, when jazz was like really exploding, he would like, and then like nothing for like ever. And then, and then nothing. And you know, it's like all I can, when I listen to it, it's like the guy barely plays. It's like, Jesus, he's like barely playing anything, but that's the genius. It's like only adding what is absolutely necessary to make it beautiful. And I, I love that. Like, I think about that. I'm like, you know, the, the French idea, the French aphorism of, I forgot the philosopher's name, saying that perfection is found not when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. And <clears throat> that's, for me, that's been such a huge teaching in that, um, you know, I'm such a maximalist, like doing and having and, and, and gathering and, and connecting and more and more and more. Um, and there is definite value to having that ability to create, get traction and move and, and have things happen. But of course, everything can become a problem. Any single thing can be a problem. So without some temperance, without the capacity to hold back, we don't really know, well, which part of what I'm doing is helping and which part is just keeping me busy and exhausted? Because what we don't know is vastly more important and valuable than what we know at any given moment. So meditation is an act of temperance. It's a, it is a, the Greeks meditating would be a practicing temperance. They'd be like, restrain yourself from reacting. Just like, stick around. Like before you want to just jam on the piano, just listen for a minute and you listen to all the other instruments and you go like, I actually only have to add these two keys and the piano pow, pops, right? 
temperance. It's like m moderation, <clears throat> restraint. I mean, holding back, learning how to hold back. It's hard work. It's hard work, especially if you're having a hard time. If you're having a difficult time, it is so hard to not go and try and eat all the, the, the salt and or potato chips. It's so hard to not like, just have to have something, you know? It's just it's challenging. It's super challenging. So it's a, it's a practice. So, so I bring this up. It's like, it's like w the ability to recognize what we need can be experienced. That insight can come by recognizing what we don't need, you know? And <clears throat> there's a, there's a, uh, there is a, you know, a, a, a pattern that we can make in our, our rituals and our routines in, in um, having set blocks of time where we restrain from doing other things. What am I doing now? I am going to oil pull for 15 minutes. Yeah, but I, I need to just, I'm just going to do that. Then you restrain yourself from other stuff. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do uh, some journaling you know, in the morning, which is a fantastic practice in the morning. To, to put your mind and some thoughts down into paper is very powerful. And I'm in journal, but, it, but I want to check the news or I want to check my phone. It's like, I'm going to restrain myself. And you challenge yourself. And then, I mean, going to yoga class is a, is it for many people, is a great act of restraint. It's like carving out the time, 12.30 to 1.30. Closing your phone, putting everything in your locker. It's like you see people at our studios that are tortured by that. They want to bring their phone. They want to check their phone. They've got their watch. They're checking their watch. It's like they can't restrain themselves. They can't. They have, there's no temperance there. So, you know, it's like any of us can go through that at times. There's, there's periods where we're more attached to that stuff and other times we're less attached. But <clears throat> the, it is the ability like to consider for ourselves, what would it look like, you know? What would it look like in one year or five years? I play the game with myself, like one year, five years, 10 years. What would it look like if I didn't cut my hair for 10 years now? <laughs> but that, I did. probably we just, it wouldn't go much further. But what would it look like in one year or five years or 10 years? What would it look like if we took on this, 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 this virtue of temperance? If I, a tiny bit more, played a moderate approach and I, and I held back, I didn't, I didn't, lunge at all the, the inclinations, the, the phone call or the messaging or the social media, <clears throat> what would it look like if we took pause, challenged ourselves? I mean, this Corona the, uh, era, epoch, the Corona epoch that we're in has this amazing effect. I was talking to my friend last night. It's like the fact that we're all like shuttered at home, shuttered at home, Already we're not out walking through the streets with the stores and the restaurants and stuff. Already there's some temperance being sort of involuntarily forced on us. So you start to see this and you start to go, oh, okay, like maybe I don't need to socialize every day. Maybe I don't need, you know, you start to take some things away and you realize, wow, this produces some good effects. Like spending time alone every day, not because no one's available, but like dedicated sort of personal time. I'm going to be alone for this hour. I'm going to be alone with my thoughts. I'm going to be alone with my journal. I'm going to be alone. And then like, wow, what is the effect of that? Imagine what, what the effect would be if we were practicing temperance for a full year, you know? And I, I suggested... Um, I've been, I've made some suggestions like to make a, to make a, 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 a ritualized day where you take a pocket, like we had the such a hour where it's like for one hour and be completely bold and honest, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to interact with my mind and the world in a completely honest fashion, say exactly what I think, uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
And <clears throat> the, we can follow that with these virtues like temperance. Like you can take, take a, take one day, take one day, like Sunday, what the, you know, God rested on Sunday or, or whatever. Like you, you, there, there, there's these markers in society already in history already that like, like, okay, today, today, nothing, you know, or the, the Jewish tradition of, um, um, Shabbat, like at, at, at Friday evening, no more electricity all through the night, through Saturday, et cetera, till, till sundown. And it's like having these capacities to like moderate. And, you know, I, I certainly know for myself, it's easy to hear these things go, yeah, 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 I do that. I mean, like I'm guilty of all of that. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, yoga. Yeah, yeah, I tried yoga. Or yeah, yeah, you know, uh, speaking honestly. Yeah, yeah, I tell the truth. It's like we, we get caught in this idea that we think we know. Like I've already experienced that as if every day is not a completely new landscape. Every day is a completely new landscape with new people of like everything changing. It's like we wake up thinking like I did it yesterday. So then today should be fine. Every day is a battlefield. Love is a battlefield. Every day is a battlefield. So, so to get up each morning and like a, like a warrior on the, the spiritual path, um, taking up some of these virtues. It's like daily, daily. What would it look like if you inched forward, <clears throat> if you inched forward with some deeper degree of self-containment, you know, of like, I don't know. Like, I think I know, but let's, t let's take this premise. Let's try out this theory. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. And then you start reading more and when you start reading like a lot more, you realize, holy shit, they, I don't know anything. You know, even like when you feel like you started to know stuff and then you, you get tipped off by some brilliant minds and you start reading again and you're like, oh, uh, I know so less. Temperance is like also this capacity to pause on the, the idea that we, that we need more, that we need more. So even though some of the rituals that I've been suggesting have been like, read more, you know, blah, 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 practice more, meditate, pranayama, etc. <clears throat> All of those should be in concert with Miles Davis. All of our, you know, like I think all of our, <clears throat> all of our, um, all of our practices and our, our objectives should be in concert with Miles Davis. Pause. To be willing to, to like be Herbie Hancock, one of the greatest jazz players ever, to be like, oh, don't play yet? Okay. And like, oh, less is more or whatever, you know. And I mean, I'm, I'm saying this because uh, I have to say that this is really difficult for me. It's not like I'm saying, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, I'm only bringing it forward because it's, produces amazing effects for me, but it's because it's so difficult and that I realize, oh wow, it's in the challenge to realize, I thought I was more moderate. I thought I, I thought I was upholding these virtues. And you go like, wow, when you really get dedicated to self-containment, you realize there is so much room. There is so much room for growth. There's so much room for not just growth, but like feeling better feeling better and, 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 and really kind of inhabiting your own mind and body more, not trying to inhabit all of the world around us, but inhabiting our own mind and our own body. That's potent stuff. <clears throat> so, um, the, the main teaching today was temperance, um, and the capacity to, to, moderate our, our, our needs to moderate our wants and to, to practice it in a way like, like having a very clear, um, example, you know, we've been talking about me if something is measured, it is much easier to manage and to reflect and to contemplate. If it's not measured, it's so easy to say, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I do that. That's what I do. It's like measured, like you have a calendar in your wall and like you journaled every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I journal every day and you look back, you're like, well, I mean, like I, I missed a few days here and there. It's like, that's why these, these, the, the measuring of, of our life has so much value because when you measure something, 
you're capable of reflecting on it accurately and managing it and developing it over time. And so you, we become, we become kind of our own sort of entity. We become more self-contained and the capacity to can, to inhabit our own mind and body requires us to restrain our desire to go out. Netflix, Instagram, social media, you know, even, even reading sometimes, yeah, I, I, I have to restrain myself, just no, you know what, I'm not gonna put more in, I'm gonna pause and just let whatever's there sort of marinate, let like the good stuff marinate, go for a walk, this is a great way to restrain from more information. <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah. Um, the, 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 w one of the things that I want to leave you with is that this idea, um, that we are building rituals and building practices and forming a path for yoga with these virtues and looking at our time and our schedule and looking at our life in a way that we start to really take uh, stock, take account of, of how much there is and, and how much capacity we have and not only filling our time, but filling some time and clearing and opening and restraining for other time. So there's a lot to do and we're gonna do it and we're gonna time it and measure it and reflect on it and extract, extract value and let that help us to shape our path forward. And we're also gonna restrain periods and not fill it and be open and be vast and be horizontal in the present and to be in this space of like, Greatness where even on a shitty rainy, it's not rainy anymore, shitty rainy Sunday morning in the Corona world, it's like, it's good to be alive. It's good to be alive. And like the, 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 the absolute stock of how we are right here and now has such meaning to it already. Our heart and our mind and our body as it is today, here and now. It's like, it's like a great gift. Okay, so... <clears throat> I love doing this. I love you guys writing in all your little hand flags and, you know, comments. Scott Kinnon, I see you. <clears throat> um, I will keep doing this. Um, I have uh, level one practice coming at 1030, which is in three minutes. And hi, Esther. The, the 1030 class today is broadcast on Pure Yoga Facebook. Uh. You know, got to go over there. Got to schlep over there. So I will be there for the next hour. And tonight at 6.30, I will do a level two practice right here on my Instagram. Okay, a level two. This is Mount Kailash, known as the, the axis of the universe. It's a mountain in Western Tibet. It's never been climbed, but it stands as a marker for the interconnection as things rotate around an axis in relationship to each other, close and far. This is Muhammad Ali, one of the great poets and spiritualists of the past generation. And these are some of the things that inspire me, to keep me aligned to where I wanna go and how I wanna be better and better for myself and for all of you guys. <clears throat> okay, so uh, good morning and goodbye, you suckers. Okay, take care. <laughs>